All right, we're going to take a quick tour of uh, probes and how to use different types of probes, primarily simple passive probes with your oscilloscope and why you need to use them. So we've got to think about if we're going to connect up our scope to our circuit, how do we do that? Well, you might just say, well, why don't I just use a simple set of probes like I use with my voltmeter, right? I can uh, kind of put them together in this little adapter here and stick it on the front end of the scope. So let's do that. Let's look at what happens. So you can see the scope trace is kind of all full of noise. It's picking up all the 60 cycle hum from uh, uh, from my, my my lab bench here and all the lights and things like that from the ballast and the fluorescence and all kinds of nasty noise. And that's the problem. If you're trying to look at low level signals and things like that, connecting up with leads like this is going to present a number of different types of problems. And let's look at why. So uh, it helps to start off by looking at what the scope input looks like. So that's kind of what the oscilloscope input looks like. It's uh, basically almost mo most of the scopes will have a 1 mega ohm input impedance. So basically right behind the front panel connector it looks like a 1 mega ohm resistor to ground. And that's typically got in parallel with it anywhere from 10 to 25 or 30 picofarads of capacitance. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Okay, so it's a pretty high impedance, just like your, your voltmeter is. But it also has a lot more bandwidth than your voltmeter, so it's going to pick up all kinds of things. So if we just connect up the wires like we just did, this is what, this is what happened here. So we connected up these wires, they basically look like big antennas, okay? And uh, so even if we connect it up to a circuit, if the circuit's not low impedance, you're still going to be injecting noise into your circuit, and you're also going to be injecting noise into your measurement, okay? So it works, you know, as, as long as your signals are really low frequency, okay, or you've got some really large signals you're dealing with. Otherwise, you're adding a lot of inductance into the, the measurement path, you're picking up all kinds of stuff with these wires, and they're acting like antennas. And you might even couple some signals to other parts of your circuit. All things that are not really good. So typically why we don't use wires. So another way around that is, well, let's make these wires shielded. Use a piece of coax. And if we do that, so now we can wind up with this situation here. And this actually solves some problems. Okay, Because now that the, the signal wire is shielded by ground, and we're not going to be picking up a lot of a lot of signals, so that's good. We're going to minimize coupling to other parts of the circuit, so so that's good. Okay, but what's bad about this? Well, it adds a lot of capacitive loading. Uh, the way to think about this is that you know, typical coax, the miniature coax you might use, like RG174 or something like that, may have you know 25 or 30 picofarads of capacitance per foot. And if you're talking two or three feet of cable, you know, of coax to connect to your circuit, that coupled with the, you know, 10, 20 picofarads of capacitance at the, uh, the input, you could easily add 100 picofarads of capacitance to your circuit by simply connecting the probe. Now, will your circuit care? Depends on your circuit, all right? Sometimes it will. You have to remember that 100 picofarads at, uh, looks like 50 ohms at 30 megahertz. That's a far cry from the original 1 mega ohm input impedance that we were dealing with to begin with. So, but this is a basic 1x probe design, and they're, they're out there, and you just got to be careful when you can use them and when you can't. You know, just take care, you know, and understand the ramifications of touching this probe to your circuit and how it will affect it. Think about, uh, would I want to solder in 100 or 120 picofarads of capacitance to my circuit at the point I'm trying to measure? Okay, and expect the circuit to still work. A lot of circuits, you know, will work just fine. Audio circuits, low frequency things, lower impedance circuits, and generally might be okay. But uh, for a large majority of circuits, uh, the amount of loading from a 1x probe is not going to be good. The capacitive loading could really affect the circuit operation. So how do we isolate the capacitive loading of this type of a probe, a 1x probe, from the circuit? Well, one way to do that is to stick a big resistor in series with that. So we stick a 9 mega ohm resistor in series with the coax. What that's going to do is now all the capacitance is sitting back here is really kind of isolated away from the circuit we're testing over here by this 9 mega ohm resistor. So your circuit really doesn't see it, so that's good. Okay. Now the resistor, being, we chose 9 mega ohms because it make, gives us a nice convenient 9 mega ohm to 1 mega ohm resistor divider here, so it's a 10x resistor divider. Hence that's the reason why we call this a 10x probe. It doesn't have 10x worth of gain, it has 10x worth of attenuation. So it'll, it'll attenuate the circuit, but it'll, or attenuate the signal by a factor of 10, but uh, that's pretty easily compensated for. Um, but uh, it also uh, it also reduces the capacitive loading, so that's good. Now the problem that you can run into, though, is that the 9 mega ohm resistor, okay, and the capacitance of the coax and the scope form an RC low pass filter that looks like this, okay. And what happens is as the frequency goes up of what we're looking at here, the 
capacitive reactance here starts going down and all of a sudden this you know, the 10x uh, divide ratio that we had because of this resistor starts getting dominated by the capacitive reactance of that capacitor and uh, we start rolling the signal off so it's a low pass filter so so now as the frequency increases you know our 10x attenuation got worse and worse and worse so it didn't really help us that much but there's actually it turns out a pretty simple fix for this and this is what's typically done with 10x probes so if we look over here to the last page here what we do is add a compensation capacitor in parallel with that 9 meg ohm resistor and uh, the, the idea there now is that for low frequencies the 10x attenuation is dominated by the 9 meg ohm and 1 meg ohm resistor okay so that kind of dominates our 10x attenuation but now as the frequencies go up okay the capacitive reactance of the co uh, scope input and the probe uh, cable uh, is going to start dominating the input impedance of the scope and then so what we do is we add a compensation capacitor here which kind of track will now track that so now at higher frequencies if we make the ratio of this capacitance to this one 10x okay now that capacitive voltage divider is going to dominate the attenuation at high frequencies so now between low frequencies and high frequencies we've got still 10x attenuation okay of course the input impedance at high frequencies is going down because this looks like this series combination of capacitors but at the end of the day the probe is still flat in frequency response generally okay so uh, so we can basically can account for that and this is basically the design of uh, commercial 10x probes now they're called 10x probes because they attenuate by a factor of 10. So that's something that's important. You've got to think about that is that uh, when you connect this probe up to your scope, you've got to remember that the probe is actually attenuating the signal by a factor of 10. Um, some scopes and probes help you out with that and actually remind you that that's what it's doing, but most of them don't, especially the lower cost ones. So if we connect up our, look at our some typical 10x probes here. Let's go take a look at some of these. I'm going to clear out these other probes, DMM probes out of the way here. And let's look at one. Here's here's a 10x probe. This is a Tektronix uh, P6105. Okay, it's a 100 megahertz 10x probe, two meters long. Uh, we'll take a look at this. is the part that would connect up to the scope. This is the part that would connect up to your circuit. There's your ground lead right there. Uh, a lot of these have got removable spring clip tips, so you can be prob probing around with the the tip here, or you can connect this up and you get a nice uh, retractable clip, so you can clip this thing into your circuit. Okay, number of different variations on this on this set of combinations, but this is typically of what typical of what you'd find. Now, these are on the probe handle itself, like this, or on the the compensation box or probe body here. You'll find the compensation adjustment. If we look in this one here, we can actually see there's a little screw, the trimmer cap, to set up the compensation for that probe. Here's another example of one here. This is also a Tektronix. This is a P60 uh, P2220. There's our, our compensation adjustment right there. Okay, and uh, there's the, our ground lead and our probe to be able to connect up. And we'll look at a couple of other examples too. But one thing I wanted to point out that's different between these two, if you look carefully at the end of these, uh, I don't know if you can see in the ca camera or not, but there's a little metal pin sticking out of this one. There's not sticking out of this one here, but there's a little metal pin sticking out of the, the end of the connector here. And what that is, it's something that Tektronix called the Tech Probe Interface. And for scopes that were so equipped, when you connected this uh, probe up to the scope, the scope had a little sensing ring. In fact, we can look at that over on this scope over here. There's a little sensing ring right around the BNC connector here. And that BNC connector, that when that little pin connects to that, that would tell the scope that this is a 10x probe that's being attached and would adjust the scale appropriately. Okay, Most scopes, especially non-tectronic scope, don't have that little sensing ring around the BNC connectors where you connect the scope up. So uh, when it comes to you know making sure that okay is my scale correct for the 10x Pro, you've got to worry about that yourself. So even if the the scope you know channel says 50 millivolts per division like it does here when I connect up a 10x Pro that is now uh, 500 millivolts per division okay it doesn't tell you that but you've got to think about that. This probe actually has a switch on it Okay, to go from 1x mode, which is just a basically a cable connection you know, or coaxial connection right to the probe tip, that's going to have you know 100 picofarad capacitance or more, but it doesn't have the attenuation. And there's a 10x mode to do what we've been talking about. So now the trick is, how do we adjust 
that compensation capacitor, okay, to um, and make sure that we match the input capacitance of the scope because some of them are quite different. This scope here, that input capacitance kind of might be hard to see, says uh, 25 picofarads. This scope over here, that one says uh, 1 mega ohm and 15 picofarads. So that's quite a difference. And uh, they certainly, a scope that's matched to this scope here wouldn't necessarily match to this other scope over here on the right. So that's why that compensation capacitor is made adjustable. So, so how do we adjust that? Uh, basically we use a little test signal, a calibrator signal, a compensation signal, and it's typically a square wave. And the square waves are nice because you can have a fairly low frequency square wave that has very fast rising and falling edges. And what that gives you is a waveform that has a lot of low frequency components and high frequency components. Because basically a square wave is fundamental, you know, frequency of the square wave is energy. But then you've also got energy at all the odd harmonics at uh, three times that frequency and five times and seven times, etc. Uh, the, the more high order harmonics that you have, the faster the rising and falling edges. So it's a nice waveform that has both you know, fast, or I should say high frequency energy and low frequency energy in it at the same time. And the way you adjust these probes is actually quite simple. Well, let's kind of look at the example over here on this scope. Okay. So in this scope here, I've got, uh, this is a P6131 uh, 10X probe, connect that up to channel 1. And on this scope over here is our calibrator signal, okay? And if I, I've got the ground lead already connected, if we connect up the scope to it, uh, the probe to it, and we can take a look here at the, uh, on the waveform. And this one is uh, pretty well compensated. Now you may notice when you get a 10X probe, they'll always come with, when they're new, a little uh, diddle stick, a little screwdriver. This one actually still says Tektronics on it. But it's just a, basically it's a little uh, non-metallic uh, screwdriver to adjust the compensation uh, capacitor inside the probe. Like I said, sometimes those compensation adjustments will be on the probe body and sometimes they'll be right on the, on the, the probe box that connects up to the scope. And uh, this is the waveform that we're looking at here is typically what you'd ideally want to see in that uh, it looks like a perfect square wave. And here's what it looks like if you have it misadjusted. Let's see if I can engage the, uh, the screw uh, the screwdriver in here. There we go. And you can see if I, if I make that capacitor too big, okay, we're going to couple more high frequency energy in, and we're, and we're going to get this overshoot on the rising and falling edges of the square wave. And if we adjust it there the other way, where that, that capacitor is too small, now we're low pass filtering uh, that square wave, and we get this kind of rolled off response there. So the idea is to adjust this thing, if we kind of go back and forth, we can adjust that until we get a really nice looking square wave. And what we've done now is made sure that the low frequency response, is, which is kind of set up by the resistor, is now matched by the high frequency response uh, set up by the capacitive voltage divider of the 9 mega ohm resistor and the parallel capacitance, and then the cable and input scope capacitance. And now this probe will be good for looking at both high frequencies and low frequencies. But um, you'll notice again this probe, if we look at the scope, you might see that the scale on the scope says 100 millivolts of division. If I remove this scope, this probe, you can see that that drops to 10 millivolts of division. This scope, this uh, probe has got that little metal pin and uh, this scope is automatically sensing that. Uh, there are other scopes that sometimes will actually have a little light that will tell you whether you've uh, you've got 1x or a 10x uh, attenuation you know, on some of the Tektronics pro, uh, scopes. But uh, the non-Tektronic non scopes typically don't have that sensing ring, or at least most of them don't. So if you put a 10x probe on there, you know you've got to multiply your uh, volts per division setting by a factor of 10 when you're using the 10x probe in order to make a calibrated uh, amplitude reading. So that's a quick tutorial on what 10x probes are and how to adjust them. Make sure that they're calibrated for any time you change a scope and you can use the same probe on a new scope, readjust that for that new scope because no two scopes really match in terms of their input impedance and a properly adjusted probe on one scope won't necessarily be properly adjusted for another scope.